Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Um, I, I came at DroidCon every year in the last three years, showing the progress that we had on uh, our open source mobile phone. And today, we will uh, give you the latest status and uh, what Yola has managed to do with, uh, with Selfish. Um, so I will start with, with presenting myself. I'm a software and hardware engineer. Uh, I started working on uh, Sony devices on 2000, uh, in 2006. I created the Free Xperia project in 2010 with the uh, ambition to um, create an open source phone uh, or to provide an open source alternative. I joined Sony as an employee in 2014 when the Open Devices program has been started and I'm working as a community uh, manager and the software architect for this program. Our um, wish with this program is to provide an innovation and development platform built by uh, co community for the community and to provide support for as many devices as possible using the latest uh, available sources. In this case, we uh, support the 4.4 kernel, which is fairly new and highly secure. Everything is built on one software branch. We use one kernel for all supported devices and one camera framework. This helps us a lot because when you try to do the things in uh, a standard way, you have to have zero patches, and zero patches is our goal on top of Android. Even if we do not support all the fancy features, all the basic functionality is there for GPS, Bluetooth, GSM, Wi-Fi, NFC, camera, and fingerprint. Here is our software structure, and as you can see, the Open Devices program do, does not touch the Android layers. This uh, approach allows us to have uh, really easy porting on the new platforms, uh, which means that uh, the whole bring up for Android 8 was in less than seven uh, days. <clears throat> this is how we structured the, kernel, uh, the uh, project. Uh, you have one Linux kernel, which is common for all devices. Then you have the device configuration, which is public on GitHub. You have the vendor part, which contains the vendor binaries and the uh, open source projects that we manage. And then you have the Google AOSP, which is not touched in any way. With our unified kernel, we provide the 4.4 kernel uh, for Android 7 and Android 8 for all devices that are listed on the left side, which means all, all devices that we produced from 2015. I will come back later with uh, lessons learned, what happened, and uh, how we hope that things will improve. This is the current status for the 4.4 kernel, and as you can see, the only not working feature is the, uh, the camera. Um, since the things cannot be always open source, there are parts of on a stack that are still uh, vendor and proprietary, and others that have been uh, open sourced. Here is a vertical through all the layers on one subsystem. As you can see, the camera, as an example, still has the framework as closed source, but the kernel driver and the hull, the application, and the uh, services are open source. The same thing happens with all the others. I'm coming back to the uh, open source camera solution, which has been uh, designed for this project. We are not using the Sony uh, advanced camera. We are, we are using the Qualcomm framework, which has been adapted for our needs, and we implemented the uh, support for our sensors. We organized the project so that other devices, new devices, can be easily added to the project. And also, we created a custom configuration that allows you to push your own changes in one place and inherit them in all other uh, projects. Th that means that when you build for one device, you get support for all devices that are supported by the same tree and kernel. How to start working with this is really simple. You pick one of our devices. 
if you want to be on the latest Android or an older device if you want to be on older Android versions. You unlock the bootloader and uh, then you follow our how-to. We provide all the information on our GitHub and we try to be as open as possible pro by providing both uh, knowledge and by providing support on our forum. And also for the ones that want to be a little more into the um, hardware side, we provide information how to connect uh, the UART debugger on our devices. Unfortunately, you have to dismantle the device to, accept the, to access the port. But when you're a real hacker in the hardware layer or you write kernel drivers, you will do that. And now what we learned, because it's all about lessons learned and we learned a lot. Unfortunately, we learned that all hardware cannot be supported on the newer kernels just because there are some binaries and those binaries are no longer compatible either with the newer kernels, either with the newer Androids. So unfortunately, I'm sad, but I have to say, we had to drop some devices. And we also had to drop the old kernels because all the old kernels are end of life. And end of life means that there are no new features and no security updates. So we decided that uh, we should move all the possible devices to the new, new kernel and then uh, let the, others, the other ones be there in the open source world if somebody wants to play with them. So you can take any of the old devices built by Sony from 2014 and onwards and use the old kernel in your own custom project. Maybe you want to do repurposing, maybe you want to use the motherboard on an IoT project. This is the status for the uh, 3 dot and kernel, and I would say that it is a really good status. We know that there are some small bugs, but all those devices can still live, even if we do not support them any longer. This is how Android support was looking, starting from Android uh, 5.1 and Android 6. As you, you can see, in Android 5.1, there were, was a lot of hardware missing, hardware support missing, and that hardware support has been added in Android 7, uh, 6. But in Android 7, hardware support for all devices has been removed. And to add it back, people will have to do uh, some uh, nasty hacks. Why we do this? We do this as an pla innovation platform, but we also value what others can do. So we had custom ROMs built on top of uh, our open devices. As, as you can see, the open devices is in the lower layers. So what comes on top, it can be the plain MSP, or it can be uh, the old Cyanogen, it can be a Paranoid, or it can be OmniROM. Any custom ROM or any custom project based on Android can be based on our core. But we can think even more outside the box and we saw that other companies became interested in innovation. So we have Sailfish that has used the open devices and uh, they um, built Sailfish on our devices. We have Ubuntu, which has uh, built Ubuntu on our devices. We had Mozilla, which built Firefox, and the whole project is open source. In 2015, uh, Firefox was proud to announce that uh, they based their uh, in open source initiative on our devices. And then in 2016, Ubuntu has published the images at Mobile World Congress for our XPI Z1. In 2017, Yola has announced Selfish for our devices, and uh, they, for the moment, support only the uh, XPI X device. If you want to get hold of me, those are my contact points. You can contact me at any time if you have questions, and I'm happy to uh, answer questions now. And after your short session of questions, I will give the uh, microphone to our um, guest, Andy from Yola.
Um, hi. Uh, so Google announced the project travel, or how it's called, I'm not sure. Um, so having like a unified base and you can always put a new Android on top, is it somehow um, yeah, interesting for you to, to have that? Or will it be possible to support uh, uh, phones in the future longer than it was right now? Because then you don't have to switch the kernel. In the uh, old uh, slide, in, in the previous slides, I already show the Hiddle layer, which is untouched by us. Uh, and the the problem is uh, that we do not want to support devices that cannot use the latest kernel. So it, it's not about just supporting devices; it's about supporting all devices in one kernel. What we did is similar with what you do when you get a, a new kernel for a laptop. You build one image, and that image will okay. basically work on any, any laptop. With our project, you can do the same. You get the kernel source, you build it for one device from the list, and it will work if you build for another without doing any change to the source. So you have one kernel, one repository, one source for everything. Okay. So but then you probably can update Android longer when you're still on the old kernel because now it's like abstracted more. Or did I get it right from the not, Android? Not directly from Sony. We support yeah. only the latest, but since the vendor binaries and the kernels are public, anyone can take an Xperia Z1 as an example in this moment with the old 3.10 kernel, which is considered stable, and they can port O but it's not supported by Sony. Okay. So we can provide support only for the devices that are actively maintained and tested by us. Yeah. So w what device would you recommend right now as the best device from any Sony? De any device from the X or XZ or XZ1 family is uh, good. And um, also we will um, publish the build guide for Android 8 because that's the hot topic this week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Andy, welcome on stage. Hello. Are we on? Good. Hi, uh, I'm, I uh, work for Yola, who uh, maintain Sailfish. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with Sailfish. I'll give a quick history of it. Um, it's a mobile Linux, so it's sort of more in common with a desktop OS than, um, than other mobile Linuxes, Linuxes. Uh, it's glibc based. Uh, its history goes back to uh, what Nokia were playing around with, with the N900, the Mimo and the Migo and all of that. And a lot of those guys, when Nokia went all Windows, decided to go and form their own company to try and make their own, uh, to, to, to continue the mobile Linux effort they were, they were doing. Uh, the big difference between um, Sailfish and other ones is that we use a lot of common open source components. So. In, underneath the uh, shell, you've got uh, System D runs everything. You've got uh, Package Manager is RPM, and you've got libzip on top of that. We use Package Kit. Then things like Dbus, uh, BlueZ, Pulse Audio, GStream. It's all common stuff that you'll find on Linux desktops as well, which makes it a bit easier to sort of play around with different software. And it's more of a sort of a mobile. Um, computer experience than sort of a, an ordinary handset, which might be a bit more like a console, a games console a bit, really. Um, the, the, the big difference is that root is something that you, you deserve because it's your device. You know, it's not something you get. You don't root a selfish device. You don't jailbreak it. You go into the settings, and there's a developer mode, and there's a little text field, and you write what you want your root password to be, and then you are root on your device. And of course, because that's by design, then applications can't really complain about a device being rooted because it's, the concept doesn't really exist in Selfish. On top, um, it's based on, there's Wayland and uh, everything's Qt. 
So um, we have a very nice uh, UI framework that's QML-based called Silica. That's not open source yet, but it's planned that this will eventually be opened once we can convince the people who paid for it to be written that that's a good idea. Um, even so, uh, the bits of it that aren't strictly open source, because QML is basically a text-based markup-y thing, then all of the apps that you find in Selfish are all in plain text on, on this file system of the uh, device, and you have access to the entire file system. So you can edit the apps if you want to. You, know, you just go in there with open the terminal or SSH in and edit stuff and run it. There's even QML Live so that the, the apps will update with your new code as you, as you write it. You can hack about and tinker with this stuff. We do have uh, an Android compatibility layer because you know, uh, a new mobile OS without any apps these days is not really worth bothering with. This is called Alien Dalvik, and it's, it's aging a little bit now. We have to update it. It supports the API 20 4.4, but most stuff that you need, like your WhatsApps and that, all runs with that so far. But there are plans to bring that a little bit more up to date. And that, of course, can see your contact lists and your uh, notifications. So it, it works well, but not as good as native apps, as I told the here maps people earlier. We need one of those. Right, so to build it, we have what we call the Hardware Adaptation Development Kit, which sounds very, very good, but it's basically a PDF <laughs> that tells you which tools to use and how, where to get them from to take, um, start with an Android BSP. Traditionally, we've used uh, Cyanogen 1 or uh, even AOSP. And then we have certain patches on top of it because we have this, the biggest sort of little thin layer, but a massive hack is that everything underneath is built with a Bionic uh, C library, and everything on top of it, all of our sort of user land stuff, is libc. So we have this thing called Hybris, which basically puts a little layer in, which means that doesn't matter anymore, and you don't need to worry about it. So we have lots of stuff that makes all the user land and even the higher system stuff believe that it's running on a glibc system, when actually underneath it's all Bionic. We have a lot of people who enjoy hacking about at this stuff. There's a, an IRC channel on Freenode called uh, Selfish OS Porters, and they are always getting new devices and finding um, sources for them and porting devices and hacking away with massive code hammers. They have a really nice time. And you can put all that together, run, the, run through the guide, and then flash your image and boot Selfish and run, run things. So the Xperia that we are just about to launch. Uh, we've done a port, uh, a first port we concentrated on one phone, which is the Xperia X. There it is. My kids. Um, that is kind of ready. Uh, the official launch date is in, on the 11th of October. Um, but at the moment, as of about five minutes before this presentation started, uh, our hardware development team have pushed uh, the required sources to do it yourself onto GitHub. Um, we started with the X, but we'll hopefully quickly add later devices after that. Um, there is a sort of um, a sales thing that we have with it because you know we like to, we need to get some cash in. Uh, how we're structuring this is that the OS itself is free. You can build it yourself. You can get the sources and you can build it. But if you want to access the store, which includes the um, APK compatibility layer and certain other premium things that we don't own that are proprietary, then you need to pay, I think, uh, 50 euros a year for, for, for access for a device for that is what we're asking at the moment. But this is very much an experiment, and we'll see how it pans out, how popular it is. This is the first time we've had a device available that people can run in the United States. So we've had some demand, and there's a lot of Americans, so we'll have to see how that pans out. So the repo manifest, which is what you need to build it, is available now at uh, that address there. And we've got a special branch that's just been pushed this morning, which uh, supports the uh, Sony ASP, AOSP. Um, we, we will be adding new devices. Uh, our developer community, uh, our porting community, has been eagerly awaiting this release. And I think we're going to be getting patches to add other devices extremely quickly. Um, you will find the hardware ad adaptation development kit there. The main difference between building your own image now and waiting for the official release is that 
home porters are limited to what our latest release of the OS version is. We, we try to maintain a quite a fast release cycle at, um, for Sailfish. It's, the target is once a month, and sometimes we make that, but sometimes we end up being a bit stuck in the RC phase, and the current version 2.1.1 has been probably about six months going. But now, we're, now that's out. You know, we've got faster, faster cycle, and the target release version for what we're going to launch on Xperia is 2.3. So that means if you build it on 2.1, there may be some bugs. But actually, there aren't very many bugs relating to Xperia in that release, because most of the things are in the hardware adaptation that you can download there, which of course will always be current because it's public. The things that need to be fixed, I've put Bluetooth on there, but I think one of our wizards fixed it yesterday. Um, which, this is our first device that's had this sort of con configuration of having fast CPUs and, and slow CPUs. So um, certainly the way our tasks are allocated on system D isn't optimal yet, so we need to work on that. Uh, we have basic support for the fingerprint sensor, but it's not hooked up to the, uh, to the hardware underneath yet. And NFC is something that we've not even implemented yet, because this is the first device we've had that actually has supported an NFC sensor. So there's lots to work on, and everyone's going to have a lot of fun doing it. And that's the end. So you can email me if you want to, and you will find me on Freenode on, that, um, on our wonderful Porter's Room, where there are many people who want to help anybody who wants to get into this stuff, because it's lots of fun. And of course, if anybody really gets into it, we've got jobs available as well, because <laughs> it is really fun. <laughs> right, does anybody have any questions?